Patterns Introduction We come across patterns in everyday life. For example, here's a pattern of tiles, a small set of tiles, a larger pattern similar to it, and then a larger pattern again. In the first pattern we've got three blue tiles along the diagonal and two red or reddish brown tiles. Here we've got five blue ones and four reddish brown and then seven and six. As we grow from one size pattern to another we can see the number of blue tiles going from three to five to seven. These are called arithmetic sequences. So let's look now at an arithmetic sequence. In this sequence we've got the following values. It starts with 2, 5, 8, 11, 14 and 17. We might be interested in identifying the next number in the sequence or indeed a number several numbers ahead. So we can represent the sequence as a series of links like this starting with T1. That's called the first term, term 1 in the sequence and we give that the number 2 as in the list. Term 2 becomes 5, then 8, then 11. So we just transcribe the terms as we have done. As we move from term 1 to term 2, we can identify that we can get from 2 to 5 by adding 3, because 5 minus 2 is 3. Similarly, by moving from 5 to 8, we can add 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. From 8 to 11, it's the same again. So we can see this pattern being consistent. And when the pattern is consistent, it's called an arithmetic sequence because there's a common difference between each of the terms. So in this particular sequence, the observations are that the first term, T1, which is also called A, has a value of 2. And D, the common difference, has a value of 3. And because we've identified a common difference, and it's always 3 from each one to the next, we say the sequence is arithmetic, because of this common difference. There are formulae given to work out the terms in an arithmetic sequence. The formula for the nth term of a sequence is given by Tn equals A plus N minus 1 D. There's also a formula for the sum of the first N terms and that's given as Sn is N over 2 2 A plus N minus 1 times D. Both of these formulae are given in your tables. You don't have to memorize them. Now let's check these formulae and see if they work, see if they make sense. So let's consider the value of the fourth term using this formula for Tn. So we're told that Tn is a plus n minus 1d and we're also checking the value of the fourth term so we're saying let n be 4. Remember d is the common difference and a was the starting point and in our sequence a was 2 and D was 3. So plugging in the values we say everywhere we see N we go to our number here we put in T4 equals A was 2 the first term plus instead of N we substitute 4 4 minus 1 and for D the common difference we say it's 3. So working the calculations T4 is 2 plus within the brackets 4 minus 1 is 3 3 times 3 2 plus 3 times 3 is 9, 2 plus 9 is 11. So if the formula is working, T4, the fourth term of our sequence, should be 11. So returning to our sequence, we had 2, 5, 8, 11. And the fourth term is 11. So the formula for the Tn appears to be working. Now let's look at the second formula you're given. Sn is n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d. This is not the term, but the sum of a number of terms. So now let's check the sum of the first three terms. We just transcribe the formula. Sn is n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1d. We're checking for the first three terms, so n will set equal to 3. 
So really it's just a question of substituting values into this formula. For n we substitute the value 3, so that becomes s3. n over 2 becomes 3 over 2. 2 times a, a is the first term in the sequence, so it's 2 times 2. Plus again n is 3 minus 1 for n minus 1. And d, the common difference of our sequence was 3. So we have quite a long expression there. But we can simplify it. 2 times 2 will give us 4. 3 minus 1 will give us 2. So it becomes 3 over 2 into 4 plus bracket 2 times 3. Multiplying out the brackets, 2 times 3 becomes 6. So it's 3 over 2 into 4 plus 6. Working within the brackets, 4 plus 6 is 10. 3 over 2 times 10 is 30 over 2 or 15. So if the formula is correct, the sum of the first three terms should equal 15. And the first three terms were 2, then 5, and then 8. In this case I'm putting in a plus, because when we're talking about a series, we're talking about plusing them. So 2 plus 5 plus 8. And 2 plus 5 plus 8 is 15. S3 is 15. So the formula, once again, appears to be reliable. So there are some rules when we're using these formulae in problems to do with patterns. The first one is that the first term, T1, is also called S1 because it's the sum of the first term and it's also the letter A. In terms of definitions, the sum of the first term is the first term. The sum of the first two is T1 plus T2. The sum of the first three is T1 plus T2 plus T3. And the sum of the first n is T1 all the way to Tn. There are useful relationships to be identified from that, that the sum of the first two terms is T1 plus T2, whereas the sum of the first one is just T1. And if we set them up like this and subtract one from the other, we can see that S2 minus S1 leaves us with just T2, because S2 is the sum of the first two up to the second one. S1 is up to the first one. So the only thing that S2 has that S1 doesn't have is the second term. So S2 minus S1 is T2. If we do this more generally, Sn, the sum of n terms, is T1 plus T2 plus T3, on and on and on, plus Tn minus 1, all the way to Tn, the sum of the first n terms. Whereas Sn minus 1 is the sum of everything up to the n minus first term, so everything but Tn. So if we see it written out like this, we can see that Sn minus Sn minus 1 is everything the first one had up to Tn, minus everything the first one had up to the one before it, leaving it with just Tn. So Sn minus Sn minus 1 is Tn. Writing those more succinctly, we can see that T2 is S2 minus S1, and Tn is Sn minus Sn minus 1. These are very useful formulae and very useful associations. They're not in your tables and they're regularly relied on to answer questions and patterns.